Welcome back to Jeff Randall Live with me, Joel Hills. Well, hardly a week goes by, does it, without a new story on how farmers are struggling to stay in business as they battle droughts and floods or are getting squeezed by the big supermarket chains. Well, given the challenges faced by the industry, it may surprise you that the world's biggest agricultural equipment maker is not only surviving, it's thriving. You may not have heard of Agco, or that you're likely to know of at least two of its brands, Massey Ferguson and Challenger. Some of the company's brands may be able to trace their roots back to the 19th century, but Agco itself was created only in 1990. The company reported net sales of $10 billion last year, a rise of more than 13% on 2011. Agco's single biggest market by far is Europe, Africa and the Middle East region, but it will come as little surprise to know that the strongest growth the company's experiencing is in Asia, with sales up almost 60% last year. Joining me now, the Chairman and Chief Executive of Agco, Martin, Martin Richtenhagen. Uh, Mr Richtenhagen, a very good evening to you. Now, Thank my you first very much word, for having me. The, the first word, Mrs Hills, my mother, told me that my first word, I, the first word I uttered was tractor. Yeah, that's good. But this is not going to be, I'm afraid, a terribly informed interview, because I came into this thinking that a tractor is a tractor is a tractor, but you've got different brands, Challenger, Voltra, MF, Fent, what is the difference between these brands? We are a multi-brand company. Uh, we have uh, every brand is clearly positioned. Fend is like the compared to cars. I don't know what cars you like, like the BMW, the Rolls Royce of the industry. Uh, Messi is more like the VW. And we try to uh, take advantage of the volume between the brands by platform solutions. So keep cost of engineering low take advantage of uh, shared components and subcomponents, but still uh, offer completely differentiated solutions to the individual farmers in different markets. Now, there are about 300,000 farms, active farms, in the United Kingdom. That's about 75% of all the land is yep. farmland. And yet you're anticipating that demand here in Britain for tractors is on the slide. Just explain why that is. Well, actually, the industry overall is booming. So everything you hear right now is more related to the weather conditions and the bad uh, uh, weather last year and the tough spring, cold uh, weather right now. But overall, the industry is booming. Demand for food is actually higher than supply. And the drivers are growing, the growing world population. While we speak here, 156 people net every minute. So when I joined the company, took over the company uh, 10 years ago, we were 5 billion on earth. Now we are 7. It's uh, changing diets in emerging markets like China, India, where people eat more meat. And if you uh, eat chicken or beef instead of rice, you need to put in five to ten times the amount of uh, carbs in order to get to the same. Okay, uh, same I, I, I want to talk about and global renewable fuel. So that means it's really booming. And in, uh, in the UK, uh, the situation is slightly different. We have consolidation, so farms do get bigger and bigger. It's not so that farmland does get out of uh, farming. It's just so that uh, big farmers take over small farmers or uh, get into bigger, bigger operations. And there's no country in the world where you find more professional farmers than in England. They're really top when it comes to productivity and efficiency. OK. Um, the whole Western European market, to what degree has that been affected by the economic downturn? Not at all. So uh, the biggest market for farm equipment is France. They had a great year last year. We actually are in a... Another record year, 2013, third one in a row. Uh, Germany is booming. Uh, England was uh, a little slow, but we managed to increase market share. About, so about, our business in England was doing comparable very good. What about places like Ireland? What about places like Italy? Italy, again, is it? Yeah, Ireland, is also, Ireland was somewhat uh, too much depending on European uh, subsidies. And uh, so they are struggling a little bit more. They're over-mechanized in a way. They bought too many too big tractors or combine harvesters, self-propelled forage harvesters and things like that. But they're coming back to normal. And in Ireland, we also could gain market share substantially uh, last year. But what, what, so that's interesting. What you all seem to be suggesting is demand for the combine harvesters, the sprayers, the, the, the hay tools, the tractors that you sell doesn't seem to depend 
greatly on the economic cycle. No, we are in a different world in a way. We are in a different uh, environment and it's still driven by supply and demand. Plus, due to the fact that farm income was so rock solid during the last many years, farmers used the money to deleverage because they are in general conservative to deleverage their businesses and to get credits for farmers is easy. So normally when you are running a small business, it's not so easy to get a credit line from your bank. When you're a farmer, you can get it and we even bring it along because we offer it to, to our customers. We have a joint venture with Rabobank. It's a Dutch farmer's owned co-op bank. I want to ask you briefly, uh, Mr. Richtenhagen, about I mean, the, one of the brands, Massey Ferguson, will be many people yeah, watching. This is will the know. leading tractor brand in the world. Indeed, and it used yeah. to have a factory in Coventry, which was yes. one of the largest yes. in the world. Mm -hmm. now, the government is really keen to to encourage you. See the, the march of the makers, uh, uh, Britain, a uh, place to make things. I mean, can you imagine? They changed a direction back? in a way, so to say. Uh, when 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 we were talking with them, that factory has been closed down about Ten twelve years, years ago, yeah. and the famous tower block has been. Uh, dismantled last year. You can see that on YouTube. It was Could ugly. Could you imagine so coming back? I think, yes, we could. The problem uh, at that time was exchange rates. So to do business in Europe, where you depend heavily on exports, because Britain as such is too small. If you okay. put a factory into Europe, it needs to cover Europe. Uh, from England is difficult. So I would invite uh, England to join the Euro well, well, <laughs> because we need also some strong partners in the uh, European indeed. community. Martin Richtenhagen, Chairman and Chief Executive of AGCO, thank you very much for talking to us about that.